Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 61, Rails Development Flow with Docker. In this episode, you'll learn the commands for working with your Docker web container, set up aliases for easier typing, and fix a data persistence issue that was brought up by one of my viewers. I'm probably not going to say his name right, but a shout out to Zol Himley for bringing that to my attention. If you'd like to code along, you will need Docker and Docker Compose installed, plus a Rails app set up with Docker. You can check out these previous episodes, Ruby Snack number 59 and Ruby Snack number 60. The basic command for Docker is that you put this before any Rails command, docker-compose run web. For example, you could have docker-compose run web rails db migrate. Anything you would run locally starting with Rails, you'd need to add all that beforehand in order to run it on your container. Now that's a lot of typing, so let's go ahead and create aliases. To create an alias that continues more than just your session, you need to open your .bashrc and add whatever alias you want. So I've made up a couple here. You should name them something that you can remember. So I've decided to use dc-web for Docker Compose run web, and then I'm going to add DC migrate for any time I need to migrate the database, DC dash R spec anytime I need to run a test, and then I've decided to go ahead and just add DC for docker dash compose for any of the docker compose only commands. I'm going to remember DC as in DC comics, even though I'm more of a Marvel gal. You see I have quotation marks around most of them except the last one because alias doesn't recognize that space. You need to have quotation marks around the whole thing. But if it's just one word, then you don't need it. Opening up my terminal in my home directory, so you'll see that I'm home. I'm going to open sudo nano dot bash rc. You can open it with whatever editor you would like to. So I need to put in my password for sudo. And then I'm going to scroll on down. There's a section where they have several aliases. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. So we'll stop right about here. If you are on Linux, you could always have a bash aliases file. I'm just going to put them right here. Included all of these new aliases. Then I'm going to control X to exit and Y to save. And now I'm going to close my whole session and then I'll reopen it in a minute. Next up, we're going to set up our app to test. I'm going to include a simplified version of my usual test gems just to show you how it goes. So we're including Pry, RSpec Rails, and Capybara, as well as Spring. So I've opened up my app. Scrolling on down, I'm going to replace what is standard with Rails with what I like to use. Now I need to run a few commands. We've changed the gem files, so I'm going to run and I'm going to use my aliases. Feel free to use yours. So I'll run DC build, and after that's done, it takes a moment, then I'll run DC up. Then in a separate terminal, I'll run DC web rails generate rspec install as you would when you install rspec. If you're on Linux and you run any command that creates new folders, you would need to run this command again to make the ownership your own instead of root. So I'm going to run sudo chown dash r user user. And then we do need to update our rails helper to require capybara rspec because I'm going to write a simple feature spec. Back in the terminal, I've gone into my app directory, so I'll say DC build, and it does take a moment, so I'm going to skip ahead here as it bundles all of those gems again. It bundles anew, so it takes a minute. So now it's finishing up. Next, I'll run DC up, and you see it's recreating the web container and then attaching it to the database. Now let's open a new tab and go ahead and add RSpec, and I've done the Linux thing on my own. So now let's head on over to our Rails helper and add require capybara RSpec. Now we're going to add a very simple test where we're going to create a vendor for our Deep Space Nine app. I'm going to fill in the vendor name with Quark, which was my favorite character, and the business name with Quarks. Back in the editor, let's add a new file to the folder I made features and we'll save it as create vendor spec dot rb and include that very simple spec. Let's go ahead and run the spec as always to make sure 
So I simply had to type DC dash R spec and it looks like we wrote it correctly and it is failing where I thought it would. It cannot find the path new vendor path. I'm just going to build it with a basic scaffold. So we can run DC dash web rails G scaffold vendor and the name is a string and the business name is a string. And then we can use DC dash migrate. Back on our terminal, I'll copy in that command and run it. And it builds all those things like usual. I just want to check out that migration to make sure it looks okay. And you see that it's made all of these files. Like a usual scaffold, just running DC dash web beforehand. And now let's run DC dash migrate. And it's done. Let's run our spec again. What's surprising to me is that actually we didn't need to migrate the test database as I've been doing often in Rails 5. So that was a nice surprise. Okay, so it comes up with a completely different error, maybe an older version of Capybara. That's not something we're working on right now. So let's go ahead and run it again with the spec that we care about right now so we get some green. Let's just run the one spec and it passes. Now let's look at that data persistence problem that I mentioned earlier. So we're going to do a little bit of testing here. So I'm going to run the dc-web rails c so we get our console and then I'm going to create a vendor right here so it's in our development database and we'll again use quark and quarks and so there it is and our vendor count is one. Great, so let's exit out of it. And what if we needed to run DC down? Just take down our whole container, because that could happen. And we see that it's down. Now let's go up again. And it's creating things. And there's a lot more things about the database this time. So that's kind of a clue that something might be up. So let's run the console again and vendor.count. Oh, it doesn't even have a database at all. So we do need to add a volume to our docker compose.rb. And I'm a little surprised they don't include this in the tutorial I was following, as it would be important to persist your data. And I think it's highly possible that you might have to run DC down at some point. So here's what you add to make sure that your data persists. You add under the DB section, volumes, Postgres data, and the path to where it goes. And then at the bottom, you would add volumes, Postgres data, driver, local. Exiting out of here, let's go ahead and bring it down again so that we know we're down when we're adding all these things. So let's go ahead and add over here to the services DB to have that path for Postgres to use. And then we'll add volumes at the bottom and save that. Now let's DC up. And that takes a little bit of a moment. And there's still some stuff about the database. And so now that we bring it up right away, we actually haven't made those databases yet in this container. So let's go ahead and create the database. We'll create development and test. And now let's go ahead and migrate because we do have one migration waiting. So it's creating those vendors. So now let's go into our console. And I'm going to just paste in again what I used before and it creates, and we have one. We'll exit out of there, and then we will bring our container down again for our test, and then bring it right back up and see if our data persists this time. And it's running it up. And you can see there's no messages about the database, so that's a good sign. Let's go back over to the other tab and run our console again. And now let's see if we still have a vendor. So vendor.count is one. So that fixed our data persistence issue. That wraps up this Ruby snack. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to sign up. 
If you are not subscribed on YouTube, click on that big ruby there and that takes you where you need to go. If you have any questions, it's best to leave them on YouTube. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.